Yo, peace was good. Um, welcome to another hip hop album review. This is part 179. The album that we'll be reviewing today is MC Ren's third album titled Ruthless for Life, released in 1998. I apologize for the lack of reviews. I've been bad busy with work and you know doing these CD collections and you know posting these videos, you know beat videos and stuff like that. So I know you guys been wanting reviews and stuff like that. So they're coming, you know what I mean? Just slowly but surely, and I'll be start doing a lot more reviews and stuff like that. All right. So um, I, like I said, it's been a while, so I apologize for that. The last album review that I did, I want to say, was about three months ago, I think. And it was Ice Cube's Bootless and B-Sides, which is a compilation album that he dropped back in 1994, which was pretty much um, songs that he made during the, um, Predator, the Predator sessions and the um, Lethal Injection sessions. So pretty much from like 1992 to 1994. Um, and you know, new songs that he made around 94 and shit like that. Um, but yeah, get about to MC Ren. Uh, did a review on his first three projects, which include um, Kiss My Black Ass EP, which I did a review, dope EP. Um, Shaka the Yawa, which originally was supposed to be called um, Life Sentence, but he changed it because he um, converted to Islam, which the first six songs are from Life Sentence, and then the last, the le the rest of the tracks are like from, you know, Shaka the Yawa, like the new tracks or whatever, but, um, which... Fucking love that album. The album goes for a lot of money online, unfortunately. I think that's like his most expensive one, like in his discography, which is kind of sad. Wish I would re release that for the people. I mean, I have it. I was lucky enough to get it for like a dollar online. But, you know, for the people that's unfortunate for other people that can't get it for that price. So, um, and I did a review on um, The Villain in Black, which I felt like was very slept on. Um, that's another dope album. Now, two years later, you know, drop this album right here, alright? Um, the singles of the album, there's three singles. The singles are Rufus for Life, Who in the Fuck featuring 8-Ball and MJG, Swap House Represent, and um, Coming After You featuring Night Street. Those are the singles of the album. So Rufus for Life, which is the first single, Who in the Fuck, the 8-Ball MJG, which is the, um, I think it was the last single. And coming after you featuring Ice Cube, that's the second single of the album, right? Um, opening it up, is what the album looks like. You see I, um, MC Run chilling in the graveyard, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much, pretty dope. Um, got like a baby carriage, you know, kind of creepy, you know what I'm saying? Um, this album is pretty much like a dedication to Easy e which is why he called it Rufus for Life, so, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. See in the back, you see like the um, the statue, you know what I mean? So pretty cool. The cemetery, alright. So what the C looks like. Alright. Pretty cool with blue and black. Kinda cool. You know, him being a crypt too, you know, I think that not a lot of people. I don't know, I don't think so. I just whatever. Um it's what the back looks like. Right here. MC Ren and Janky. I guess this man's has in, in, in jail and shit like that at the time. I don't know if he still is. I see MC Ren just, you know, posing. I see the um, cemetery in the background, you know what I mean? Pretty cool. Alright. I already mentioned the three singles. Um, let me uh, introduce the producers. The producers, the, the producers on the album are LT Hutton. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Alright, so like I said, LT Hutton, uh, T Mix, and Banks. Shout out to Ant Banks, dope producer and rapper. Uh, Bobcat, Bobcat, you know, he's worked with uh, MC Ren in the past. He's worked with um, L, Cool J. Uh, he used to work with, um, I think he worked with Ice T at one point too. Don't remember. Um, T Mix I mentioned before, uh, LT Hutton I mentioned before, uh, The Chill and Raw Steel, A Banks I mentioned before, uh, Touch Tone, I don't know who that is, Larry Johnson, Alan Bird Tatum, don't know who they are, um, and I don't think it's Bird, the Bird that we know from Rascast and Chi Ali fame is not that bird. I wish that would that would have been dope. 
Um, he has a different name, but um, that's not him. And um, Young Trey, right? So it's 12 tracks deep. Uh, the features on the album are Eight Ball MJG, uh, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, and RBX, which ironically their cousins and shit is kind of cool. A uh, big rock in the chill. Um, the chill, I want to say, is that's the same. The chill from um, uh, Compton's Most Wanted. I, I could be wrong about that. Um, I know somebody will come correct me on that. Uh, peeps, and that's pretty much it, right? You know, I'll get down and we'll go through some of the tracks. All right. Yeah, let me just put this back in. Right. Uh, first track, uh, Roof is for Life. This is the first single of the album. It's pretty much a dedication to Easy E. And uh, he also talks about his upbringing to the hip hop game and stuff like that, how he came about and stuff like that. Pretty cool. Um, like I said, it's the first single of the album. Kind of sets the tone of the album in that kind of sense. You know, it was a pretty cool beat, pretty cool um, track right there. Uh, track two, Who in the Fuck, featuring April and MJG. Um, it's a braggadocious track, it's a dope track, um, pretty dope. It definitely sounds like something that would have been one of their albums, but it, it definitely fits on their album, on, on this album, because if you listen like early April MJG tracks, albums I should say, they always had like a West Coast feel, because like, um, especially back in like the, the early to mid 90s, a lot of like Midwestern, down South, um, artists, you know, specifically from like um, Tennessee, which is the South, you know, uh, Michigan, um, you know, Texas and shit like that, um, even Louisiana, um, their music tends to be more um, G-Funk influence, especially around those times. So, um, you know, I just thought I'd throw, throw that out there. So a lot of their music back in the day had that G-Funk feel to it. So... So it doesn't have like that, it didn't have like that, um, oh, what's this, well, um, that signature Memphis sound, if that makes sense, you know, it had like more G-Funk feel, influence to it, you know what I mean, so, and then, uh, you know, them moving to Texas later on, you know, that definitely signified their sound and stuff like that, so, um, but yeah, enough for that, but yeah, Who in the Fuck featuring April and MGG, pretty dope track right there, um, they definitely go in on that drum right there. Right there, um, track three, a nigga called Run. Um, it's a braggadocio track that's produced by Ant Banks. Fucking dope shit. I mean, Ant Banks, he's such a dope producer. Like, um, I, I I'm surprised a lot of people don't really hire him to do beats like for them for their project because he's so dope. I feel like he's somebody that never got his just due. Like he gets respect, you know. He gets respect. Like he gets honorable mention. But when, you know, people talk about, you know, like, the West Coast producers and stuff like that, you know, they always talk about, you know, E.A. Ski, who, another dope producer, another underrated producer, but they always talk about, like, you know, Dr. Dre, you know, DJ Quick, and, you know, people like that, or, you know, Frederick, you know, uh, DJ Muggs, you know, they talk about people like that, but they rarely hear, they rarely talk about um, Ant Banks, which is kind of sad, and, you know, it, it sucks, but, you know, it is what it is, but... The real niggas, the, the real heads, real recognize real, you know what I'm saying? So, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, track 4, Coming After You, featuring Ice Cube, which is the second single of the album. Um, what's crazy about this song right here, it definitely has like a more, uh, it has like a more of an East Coast feel to it. It has like that, um, it sounds like something Easy Mo B would have done, you know what I mean? It's had that Easy Mo B kind of vibe to it. If you guys are familiar with Easy Mo B, you know, he was, um, you know, the in-house producer for, you know, Biggie, you know, the Bad Boy record and stuff like that. You know, very ill producer, man. Very dope. Matter of fact, I think um, one of the CD collections I sold you guys is um, debut album. Um, what's the name of that shit? Um, Odyssey 2000, I think it's called. Um, now I Never Odyssey 2000. That came out 2000, so very, very dope. Um... Track five, Boys to Compton. It's just him, you know, paying homage to Compton and that kind of thing. You know, just talk about how shit goes down in Compton, you know, things like that. You know, we hear that all the time, so, you know, this is no different, you know what I mean? Uh, track six, Must Be High. 
Um, he just talks about how he talks about male groupies. You know what I mean? He talks about how you know niggas want like you know people always talk about yeah he he's talking about male groupies like how like you know they want their autographs and want pictures with him and things like that you know and that's kind of a, a little bit of a gripe for me when artists talk about that like because how are you a groupie if you want to take a picture with your favorite artist you know because without your fans you wouldn't be shit I, I, I hate to say it like that but that's what it is now I can understand that if you like you know you being a groupie, you calling him out of his like from his like you know his, you calling him by his government name and like you know ask for his phone number and things like that. Then yeah, I can understand you being a groupie and like following him in every town that he's at or whatever. Like what are you like? You have to go like to a different state. He's performing that state. Then you're gonna follow him because that's some groupie shit. Or like you like, you know you order a hotel like you order like you go stays in the hotel and then you um. You get the the room next to him. Yeah, that's some straight groupie shit. <laughs> that's like, oh shit, that's some straight fucking solid shit for a one hour photo. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I'm getting off topic, but yeah, but that's what he talks about. He just talks about male groupies and stuff like that. Um, matter of fact, Ice Cube had a song like that on his first album. Um, America's Most Wanted. I forgot the name of the song, but um, because it's been a while since I heard that album. You guys, forgive me. I listen to a lot of music, so sometimes, like you know, um, I kind of you know forget stuff. But you know, whatever. But yeah, must be high. Yeah, um, talks about male groupies and stuff like that. Uh, track seven, so what you want? Features Snoop Dogg and RBX. Um, it's a dope posse cut, like I said before. Um, like I said, Snoop Dogg and RBX are cousins and stuff like that. Dope posse cut, pretty dope right there. Uh, track eight, uh, shot caller. Um, featuring Big Rock and the Chill, and yes, the Chill is from Compton's Most Wanted, so I just thought I'd throw that out there. That was a pretty cool track right there. Um, when you listen to the song, it definitely has that CMW, like that MCA kind of feel to it, you know what I mean? Like the later MCA, you know, so it definitely has that vibe to it, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, track nine, um, all the same. Um, who did I write down? I didn't write it, but um, in the song, all the same, he just pretty much talks about how, you know, rappers, especially around that time in the 90s, you know, all started sounding the same and things like that, but they're not realizing these artists that try to um, chase the fame, they get screwed over by record companies and things like that, and, um, but, you know, these artists, they're so blind to the fact that the fact, this is blind to the fact that, you know, you know, they get this fame, but then it gets to their head and shit like they're not really gonna get screwed over. So it's kind of like him paying, you know, kind of like a, a forewarning to all the MCs coming up and things like that. So he's just trying to say like, you know, just be original, you know, that kind of thing. Everybody's gangster, 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 and you know, all that shit. But you know, but like have some versatility and that's gonna speak volumes because that's that's what's happening today because. A lot of music today, you know, sounds the same with this mumble rap shit, you know, I don't really like that shit, but, you know, I, I know it has its place, you know, like, if you're at a club or whatever, you're at the bar or a lounge or whatever, your house party, then yeah, you're gonna play, that's the shit you're gonna play, but when you play that shit, like, every day, like, you have no, you have no idea, like, where I work at, like, I work for a drug rehab, and then, like, you know, I transport, so, I, you know, I drive clients and, you know, to their, you know, different halfway houses, I drop them off, and, like, I... They need to go to like the doctor, like I'll drive them, whatever, whatever the case may be. But I do other stuff too. But um, you know, the music stations that I like that that they play is the music that play like Migos and Twenty One Savage and all that nonsense and just play the same fucking music over and over and over and then that's what I hear and, and so that song definitely speaks out today, you know, so that's all the same. Uh the song Who Got the Street Shit. Um it's kind of a laid back track, you know. It's okay. It's not really the best track on the album, but it's high, you know. Um, track 11, Pimpin' is Free, featuring Peeps. Um, that's in the, that's a gangster track. Definitely has a dope beat to it, you know what I mean? That's pretty cool. And the last track, CPT, CPT All Day, uh, featuring T Girl. Uh, it's a braggadocio track. 
what I like about the track, it, it definitely has like a um Daz Daz Dillinger track, Daz Dillinger feel to it. It definitely sounds like something he would have done, especially around like, you know, around 96, 97, you know what I mean? So it definitely has that feel to it. So I fucks with that track. Um, but overall, this album, it's okay. It's not his best album. I kind of feel like with this album, he was a little bit too laid back, if you, if you ask me. Um, you know, he just kind of felt uninspired. That's what it felt like to me. You know, the production was cool. I think some of it could have been a little bit better. But um, definitely got some decent stuff. And, you know, um, I wouldn't write it off. I would definitely give it a chance. It's not as bad as I heard some people call it. But it's not as bad. But um, obviously, I prefer his first three projects. You know, Kiss My Black Ass EP. Sorry about that. Kiss My Black Ass EP. Um, you know, Shock of the Hour is my favorite project from him. Um... The Villain Black, which is another dope album that I like from him. And then now you got this album. But definitely the first three projects I, I prefer the best, you know, because he was like more aggressive. The production was a lot more darker. And that's another thing, too. The production wasn't as dark. It was a lot more laid back, more up tempo. Um, not as dark and shit, you know what I'm saying? But um, this album, I, I would say this album and Kiss My Black Hats EP would probably be like his cheapest one. In his discography, even though they're all out of print, but um, but I think Kiss My Black Ass was re released, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I think that was the only one that was re released, but the other ones were, weren't. So, um, expect to pay at least ten dollars for this, ten dollars and up. So, which is not expensive, but it's not cheap either. So, but then again, I like to find the cheapest price online. So, but that's pretty, pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that review. I apologize for lack of reviews. Um, that's it, folks. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that review. Peace.